All right, what's up everybody? So in this video, I'm gonna go over the tennis ball throw experiment with you. All I need is a tennis ball and something to measure time with. So I've got a simple stopwatch here. This one actually still works. So I'm gonna throw the ball from a distance of uh, about four feet, which we're gonna neglect, okay, for the simplicity of the experiment. And then I'm gonna try and catch it at the same height. The, the reason I'm gonna do that is to preserve the symmetry of the event, okay? We know that due to one of Newton's laws, every action is gonna have an equal and opposite reaction. So as I throw the ball up, it's gonna take a certain amount of time to reach a peak height. It's also gonna take the exact same amount of time to go from the peak height back down to the height that it left from. We'll talk about all the things that entails in terms of velocity and that sort of thing moving forward. So as soon as I release the ball, I'm gonna do my best to hit the timer and then I will catch it and I'll stop the timer. So here we go. All right, so I didn't catch it, but what matters is that I hit the, t the timer at just the right moment to make sure that, hey, when I, when I caught it, the timer stops. So let's go inside and let's take a look. Oh. So, what do we know? We know I threw the ball up, and then I caught the ball. So what I said earlier, we're going to neglect the height that it left from and the height that I caught it. We're gonna treat those as the same, okay? So what that's going to do is allow us to, to think about this in terms of the ball leaving, leaving the ground or leaving my hand, and then catching it at the same height. And again, what that does is that gives us a level playing field so we can say that the displacement, the change in height, is zero from start to finish, okay? Starts and ends at the same height, so my displacement throughout the entire event would be zero. But we know it's gonna go up and it's going to come back down. So I'm gonna give you a couple of values here. I'm gonna give you the amount of time it took to reach the ground, right? So from my stopwatch, that said 2.65 seconds. And so if that's my time value, I'm gonna give my Y value a zero. Again, that's the height. That's, that's how, how long it's spent in the air. What can we deduce from this? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna look at this in a couple of different ways. The first of which would be purely just a quadratic relationship. So due to the fact that this is a parabola, and Newton's law says we have an equal and opposite reaction occurring, then I know that this distance that I went up, I could cover in the same amount of time going back down. What that means for us numerically is that if I cut this number in half, that's gonna be 1.325 seconds. That's how long it's gonna to take to reach the maximum height. But from there, I need a little bit more. I need something else in the problem to help me. And that something else is what we've been studying in free fall. That is the acceleration due to gravity. So we know that our acceleration due to gravity, AG, or we can just call it G, is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So what can I do here but figure out my <clears throat> I need to figure out my height. I want to know how, how far up it went. If I can figure out how far up it went, 
then I can determine how fast I actually threw the ball. So here's what we're gonna do. We've, we know we've got a kinematic equation. Distance equals our initial position plus bi times time plus one half gt squared. So let's see. We know that we started out at a height of zero. We don't know what my initial velocity was, but we do know that I can plug in a value for time and solve for vi because I know the g value. So here's what we're going to do. We know our distance. We know we wanted it to be all the way to zero. So I'm going to use this particular point here. Ah, a distance of zero. I know when it's back on the ground, I know that that took 2.65 seconds. So I'm plugging that in for t. And then I also know, I can say plus one half times negative 9.8 times the 2.65 squared. Now, if you look at that equation, I've got one thing that's unknown. I've got one left, one variable left, and it is vi, okay? It's vi, so what can I do there? <clears throat> I can solve all of this out. So I'm gonna grab a calculator. Yep, we still use those, right? So I'm gonna go through, figure out what all this is. Zero equals 2.65 vi minus, right, that's gonna be negative. So we type all that in. I'm gonna get 34.4. We'll go ahead and go one more decimal place. So 34.4. So I'm gonna, if I move that over, What do you notice here? I've got all positive numbers. When I divide, I'm still gonna get a positive. Why is that true? Because VI is of course the velocity right here. And that was gonna be going up. I threw the ball upward. So it has to have a positive velocity. So using a little bit of algebra, we divide, we can figure out that my initial velocity was 12.985 meters per second, my initial velocity. So what did I need to do that? All I needed was the acceleration value due to gravity, which is constant, we always have that. And then I simply needed one measurement from the problem. I needed how high, I'm oh, sorry, how long it's been in the air. So what I'm gonna be able to do now is take this number and determine how high it went. How can I do that? Well, I'm actually gonna use the same equation but now this number is going to be unknown. So I have D equals 12.985 T plus one half times negative 9.8 T squared. So here's the thing guys, we actually do know what the time value is if we're looking for the maximum height. That occurs at the half moment, the half, the half time spot. So, we plug that in, 12.985 times 1.325 seconds plus one half negative 9.8 times 1.325 seconds squared, then it's gonna give me the maximum height. So plug it in exactly as we wrote it, 12.985 is 1.325 plus negative 4.9 times 1.325 squared. So this doesn't seem like much, but remember we're measuring in meters. So D equals 8.6 meters. So the ball has a maximum height of 8.6 meters. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Just to verify a couple of things, I'm gonna take you through one of the other kinematic equations that should match up here. So we know that at 1.325 seconds, my velocity is equal to zero. Why? Because at a peak, we're changing from positive velocity to negative. We have to pass through a tiny moment, an instant of a zero velocity. So I'm gonna utilize the equation, VF equals VI plus A delta T. So remember on our first equation, we figured out that my initial velocity was 12.985. 
plus a, so a being negative 9.8, and then the time value of 1.325. Now, I did use this measurement by hand, so hopefully we're going to see this work out. What I should get here, I should get zero. I should get zero for my velocity at the peak. So let's see what happens. 12.985 plus negative 9.8 times 1.325. Check it out. Zero. How cool is that, right? So hopefully this has given you guys a little more insight into um, free fall motion, what is technically a projectile, right? But we're only focused on something called free fall, which which any object that is only experiencing the acceleration due to gravity is in free fall. All right, hopefully this helps. Feel free to go out and see how high you guys can throw.